So to make this lab work, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to install the latest version of VMware Player, and you're also going to want to download CentOS. So I went to CentOS.org here, and then you just go to Download, and you want to get a mirror, so you go to uh, Public Mirror List, and then you need to pick a mirror, and I recommend picking one. I picked one that had direct DVD downloads set to Yes. So for instance, you could just go to this, let's say this mirror right here, and I'll click to HTTP link and then you have the list of all the versions of CentOS available for you to download. I picked the latest version which is 6.2 and then went in there and then I'm looking for ISO files and then I need to pick if, whether I want the i386 architecture or a x86 64 64 bit architecture so depending on what you want to run if you pick the i386 for 32 bit um, then I will go down here and I'm going to download the DVDs. So I'm looking for the ISO files for DVD and you can see right here CentOS 6.2 i386 bin dvd1.iso and so I downloaded this file it's 3.6 gigabytes so it's a pretty large file it's going to take a little while to download. Also you want to download the latest version of VMware Player when you go to VMware, let's see here, when you go to VMware.com you're going to go to uh, products right and you can see down here on the bottom left hand corner there's the VMware player under free products and you'll go here and you'll want to set up an account with VMware and download um, the player and the, and the player is free for download so I recommend download if I close this out that I have CentOS 6.2 i386 bin DVD disk 1 downloaded and I have it on my desktop so I have it downloaded also you can see here in this folder this is the um, my C drive my program files folder and now I'm in the VMware folder and when I go into the VMware player here a file that you're gonna want you might need to have not necessarily but you might is the VM net CFG or VM net config .exe. now this file does not install by default when you install your uh, VMware player. What you need to do is you need to get your download download the VMware um, executable installer file and you need to extract it and then copy this file over um, manually and I have a video tutorial on how to do that but this is this file is very useful it doesn't install by default and I'm going to use it right now so I open it up and and I'm, I've got a VM Net Zero bridged, um, bridged mode here, and then you can pick bridged to, and I'm going to pick which, which NIC on my actual laptop I want it to bridge to, right? So I don't want it to bridge to the VirtualBox bridge network. I want it to bridge to my Ethernet adapter. And the thing with VMware is sometimes it gets um, lost in figuring out which physical NIC on your computer to virtualize to the to the VMs to the virtual machines so that's when this this tool comes in handy so I'll click OK alright and now I'm, I'm good to go so and I'll minimize that so now what we need to do is launch VMware player and set up our CentOS Linux server that we're gonna then turn into a router so I already have one set up before, but we're going to set I'll set one up scratch just for this tutorial. So I'm going to create a new virtual machine. So to get a, a virtual machine for our CentOS server, I'll click create a new virtual machine and I'm going to install I'm going to um, create this virtual machine and then I will install the operating system later. So that way I can set up some special settings. So what I'll do is I'll hit next and I'm going to choose Linux, and you can see here that since, um, since CentOS is identical to Red Hat Enterprise, I'm just going to pick the version of Red Hat Enterprise. So Red Hat Enterprise version 6, it's not 64-bit, it's 32-bit that I downloaded, so I'm just going to pick that. I'll hit Next, and I need to give it uh, a name. So um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6, and I'm going to say second or part two. Part two, right? So I'm, this is my second try. All right, so then I'll hit next. And then it needs to um, ask you how big you want the hard drive to be. 
So recommended size is 20 gigabytes. That sounds fine for me, so I'll hit next. And I can customize the hardware a bit. So I can customize the hardware, and I can say um, 2 gigabytes of memory, processors. I could change the cores to 2 if I wanted to. I can also, um, here, you can see here my network adapter. This is my NIC. This is important. Is set to automatically by default to be in NAT mode which is not the best one for this scenario so I'm gonna change it to bridge mode alright and that's I'm gonna need that and I'm also gonna add a second NIC so I'll add my second NIC see here there we go I hit click to add took a second and now I'll hit network adapter add a network adapter I'll hit next and for the second network adapter what I wanna do is I wanna create a um, a different type of scenario so I'll just right now leave it at NAT and click finish and so now I have this second network adapter now for the second network adapter I don't want it to be in NAT mode so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a LAN segment for it so I'll check mark LAN segment I have this one highlighted highlighted I'll check network uh, LAN segment and LAN segments and I'll create one for the 111 network now you can see here I already have one for a previous time for 112 so I'll make one for our 111 network so VLAN or I'm not even gonna say VLAN in this case it's network network since it's not a VLAN but it will be the 111 network so I'll click OK and I'll switch this to network 111 so this second NIC will be a LAN segment and I've created a network a label for it network 111 and I'll click and let's go to CD drive and instead of using a physical drive for the CD drive I can point it right now to the ISO image and have it boot from that so we can do the installation so I'll browse and I'll go to desktop and there's my ISO file click open and so now I've got my ISO file my installer ISO file set to use this ISO image in my CD DVD drive right so now I am all set um, sometimes it's nice to put in some uh, raise up your video graphics but I don't need to in this case so then I'll hit close and finish and so now I've got Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 part 2 set up and I'm ready to boot it up and install Linux so all I have to do is hit play virtual machine and it should find the ISO file it should have the two NICs set up and we should be able to do a quick installation of CentOS alright so there it is it found the the ISO file and I'll hit enter and it's gonna go through the installation and the installation is very straightforward all you have to do is put in some usernames and passwords and accept all the default settings and that's fine to get started with just accept the defaults and on the next video we'll start with configuring CentOS I'm gonna skip the media test and I'm gonna scroll over notice that I had to scroll over here to find the next button in the right hand corner so I had to scroll down to release the mouse once you click in the VMware window your mouse will get captured and to release it click the um, right control alt buttons on your keyboard will release your mouse so that you can scroll this window over and scroll this bottom one over and then I'll hit next so then it captures my mouse again and hit next and English and next and English next and I'll need to hit control alt on the keyboard and basic storage devices that's fine I'll scroll down and capture the mouse next and it says do you want to discard any data yes I can discard any previous data you could set up a host name for your router and I could say machine five you know like very anonymous or something machine six alright I'm gonna pick my location and now once again control alt to release the keyboard here 
I'm going to um, need to put in my root password. So I'll do that. Control Alt, release the keyboard to reach the next button. All right, and what type of installation would you like to install? What kind of installation would you like to install? I'm just going to use all space. Next. And then write changes to disk. Okay, looks like it's creating the changes. It's uh, partitioning the hard drive, the virtual hard drive, formatting it with just a default installation. And what environment are we going to use? Well, I'm going to use, so that way I have a graphical user desktop, a graphical user interface set up. I'm going to click desktop mode. And this is the exact same thing we did in the lab the other night for my students that are online students that are watching. Um, if you wanted to, you could click customize, which we just kind of showed in the lab, so that when you hit next, you can actually customize which software applications are you're going to install. You can also customize languages and anything that you want to install. Now, if you decide you're going to go um, wild here and install all kinds of languages and things, then you might need to have downloaded the DVD2 portion of the uh, whole separate ISO file because this um, operating system actually has part 1 and part 2 DVDs. And so I'm just going to accept the default here and not change anything so I'll hit next and just take the default packages that are recommended with the desktop environment that we chose so it looks like it has to install 1107 packages and it's just going to go through the installation process I'm going to pause the video recording and start it up again when it's done installing Okay, the CentOS installation is complete. All we have to do is reboot our system. There's a reboot button here down at the bottom, as you can see. Um, let's see if you can see it down here, right? So I'm just going to, let's see here, reboot the system. Okay, and we'll let that reboot. And looks like CentOS was installed and just restarting. I'll hit control alt on my keyboard once again the right control alt buttons to release my mouse and we're just waiting for it to boot up. Okay we have a new install here so we're gonna create our user I'm gonna okay the license agreement set up a quick user I'll check my date and time okay I'm getting a message that insufficient memory to configure kdump that's okay I'll just click OK and move forward Okay, it looks like CentOS installed all right. Okay, CentOS has a very retro look for older versions of, it reminds me of older versions of Fedora. Um, very simple interface to use, really, really kind of nice that way. It's very um, easy and straightforward.